Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to speak about 13 tips for the Honor Magic V2. The first part of the video is about tips that are more of general nature and not specific to foldable phones. And the second half of the video is really specific to foldable phone features. And as 13 tips are quite a lot, I would suggest let's cut right to the chase and start with the first tip. The first tip is one-handed mode. So the great thing about the Honor Magic V2 is that the aspect ratio of the front screen is quite normal, but that also can lead to problems when using it one-handed. And this is why the smartphone has a one-handed mode and this works quite differently um, in contrast to other smartphones. So you cannot just swipe at the bottom, you need to swipe left at the bottom and then hold and then you can go into one-handed mode, tap outside and you will come back to full screen mode and you can also swipe to the other side. So swipe and hold and then you will have the small screen on the left side of the screen. You can activate one-handed mode in settings, accessibility and one-handed mode and there you also get a description of the gesture shortcut. You can use three key navigation shortcuts or a gesture navigation shortcut. Um, it depends on if you have the navigation bar or if you're using or relying on gestures and you can also deactivate one-handed mode in the settings. Let's stay with gestures and the next tip is for a screenshot gesture. In order to take a screenshot you just can knock on the screen with your knuckle and you already can see that it took a screenshot that you then can share or edit. Another option is to knock once and then paint so to say and as you can see what it did is it circled part of the screen and then only one part of the screen will be screenshotted and you also can enlarge the area or uh, do it uh, manually. You can also choose to have an oval, a hard, a rectangle shape or a custom shape. So the custom shape will then follow what you uh, drew with your knuckle on the screen. Another gesture for screenshot is using three fingers and swiping down. So that's also a quite useful gesture. And you can activate these gestures in settings, accessibility features, shortcuts and gestures and then you have the screenshot global favorites gesture and here you can see you have knuckle screenshots and the three finger swipe down screenshot. Another very useful feature is to be able to swipe up from the lock screen and then you get to some very useful shortcuts. So right now I'm on the always on display so when I double tap and activate the lock screen I have two shortcuts down here Google Pay and the camera. And now I can swipe up from the bottom and get voice memo, calculator, torch and timer. So I can directly launch a timer from the lock screen and I think that's quite useful to have additional shortcuts down here. The next two features are related to security and to privacy. They are called private space and parallel space. And we'll start with Private space. Private space is a completely separate space on your device. Everything you put into private space will stay in private space. And when you exit private space, you have no option to access this information without having the credentials. And for private space, you also have to use a different finger with a different fingerprint and also a different pin to access it so you can't use the normal device pin or your normal registered fingerprints. In order to configure or to start private space you go into settings, privacy and then you can see here it uh, there is private space. I already set it up. When you did not do this you will be guided through a setup process. Now I can hit log in. And after entering the pin, I will get into a completely separated home screen setup. Also, all the apps are separated and 
as of now I only have the default app that came pre-installed so I also need to install every app because everything I install into the private space will be kept separate and if I want to leave the private space I have to go to this notification welcome to private space click on it and then I can exit private space and then this space will be closed and I will come back to my normal phone setup. So that's actually quite useful if you want to have a separate setup with a separate set of apps or separate, separate apps of data. It's also very useful if you want to separate your private and your business account, for example. So you can have your private account front and center and then have private space for all your business related um, data and contacts and, and so on. So I think um, that's really a clever implementation of privacy and um, I quite like it. The next feature is called parallel space and this is a little bit different than private space. It's more like a separate room that runs inside of the operating system. You can run it side by side so it's more like an app that you open but data you put into private space are more secure and more safe um, in contrast to putting them on your normal uh, device space and it can also be used to run two apps side by side for example it would be possible to run two app, apps with two accounts uh, it was used in some examples to for example use it to play two instances of League of Legends for example so if you're into playing League of Legends and uh, want to use two characters that's possible but now let me show you how to access parallel space again you need to go into settings but now you will go into security and not into privacy for private space. Head into security and on top you find parallel space. I need to scan my face and um, I already set it up. If you did not set it up then you can go to the setup process and then you can uh, change some options here. So change the passport type security question, change your fingerprint, uh, fingerprint ID, face recognition and so on. And you can also add parallel space to the home screen. Let's do this. Parallel space shortcut created. And then there is this shortcut on the home screen and you can launch parallel space via the shortcut. You can also use a pinch out gesture and then this will open parallel space and it looks like this. On top you have two buttons, move files out and move files in. And you can use move files in to move images, videos, documents and stuff like this from the main space into the parallel space. And you can also use move files out to move them out of the parallel space back into the main space. And then you can all, um, add apps to parallel space and all the apps that are compatible are listed. In this list and as you can see I already um, used it to put Wild Rift into parallel space and for the remainder of the demonstration I will now open the screen. I can launch League of Legends in parallel space and then there's an error because I need to um, use an account and then you can go into the multitasking view and launch League of Legends in the main space. And now, as you can see, you have one instance of the game on top and the other instance of the game down below. And uh, it's for you to decide if that's useful for you and which kind of apps you want to use um, in this kind of multitasking scenario. But of course it can, yeah, it depends on your usage pattern. And that's parallel space, a separate space from the main space in the operating system that you can use for storing yeah, data that need to be more secure or for running multiple instances of one app. Then a minor tip is Themes. So as you can see, I currently have a dynamic wallpaper. So when I unfold the phone, then the wallpaper will reflect the unfolding. 
and there are actually several dynamic wallpapers pre-installed. You will go into home screen and wallpaper and the trick is don't go into wallpaper and use one of the wallpapers here, like the recommended ones, but go into themes and then you have all the themes that support dynamic wallpapers. For example, you have Magic Cube and you can see it's dynamic or the other ones. This is the pre-installed, the sunshine one. But for demonstration purposes now, let's Magic Cube apply the theme And now you can see the home, uh, the, the wallpaper changed and it will also change when I fold the device. You can see the wallpaper is moving and when I unfold the device also this will be reflected in the wallpaper. And I think that's a really cool effect. I really like um, also pre-installed themes and uh, dynamic wallpaper and I first had no idea that I was able to use multiple dynamic wallpapers with this phone. And the last tip in the first section of this video with more general tips for the phone is about the camera. So this was a big surprise for me. The camera actually has a very, very good macro mode that is really comparable with some of the more flagship phones like the S24 Ultra. And um, you don't have to activate this mode, but you can. For that, let's go into the camera and Let's look for something to photograph. So I have this SD card here that has to do the trick. And if you come close to an object, then macro mode will automatically be enabled. And then you can take a photo. And as you can see, it's quite impressive how close this phone can focus and how good the magnification um, is. And in the camera app, you also have the option to go into more settings and then launch super macro mode. Then you have the 1x mode, which is kind of the, yeah, the normal mode. And it does the same as if you would launch it from the normal camera app. But you can also go into 2x and then this will further crop into the image and then you can get even closer like this and you will see all the different scratch marks that resulted from using the SD card in the camera. So the macro mode of this phone is actually quite impressive and if you are at least a little bit into macro, I really recommend to try the macro mode of the camera out. The following tips are really specific for the foldable nature of the phone and um, are related to multitasking for example. And um, we will start with multitasking. I already did a separate video about multitasking with the Honor Magic V2. So head into this video if you're interested in multitasking specifically. But let's uh, go into the first tip. So as, as you can see, I'm currently in the multitasking view. I have two windows, Chrome and X open. And you can use the action bar that you can access by swiping from the side of the screen and holding to launch a floating window. So in this case uh, I opened Reddit and um, when you click an app from the action bar it will open as a floating window that you can then use for multitasking and head over to my multitasking video to see what you additionally can do with these floating windows. And you can also open multiple floating windows. So let's go into another app, for example, the calculator, then the calculator will open also as a floating window and you can move it where you want. You can also open um, a third app, one password, for example, then the first app will um, be put into this little drawer here and you can cycle through the already opened floating windows and when you minimize them or when you open more floating windows, then you get this new sidebar or taskbar where all your opened floating windows will be stored and then you can open them individually and the other, one, the other ones will stay in this taskbar. Then we have some tips around the behavior of the phone when you, uh, when you close it. So let's say you're watching a YouTube video on the inside screen when you then 
close the phone, the video or every other app will continue on the front screen. And you can configure this behavior in settings. So go to settings and then foldable phones. And then the top is fold the phone when the interior screen is on. Fold the phone, keep the exterior screen on or keep the exterior screen off. So I have it currently set to keep the screen on because when I fold it I want to continue using the app in most of the cases but you can also keep the screen off when you fold the phone. Let's stay in this menu because the foldable phones menu contains all options regarding the foldable phone factor. You can configure app scaling on the interior and exterior screen. So for example, you can configure that a certain app like Amazon opens into full screen or opens in 4 to 3 or 16 to 9 aspect ratio. In most cases, this is already fine and pre-configured, but if an app has problem with working in a certain aspect ratio, then you can reconfigure this in this menu. Then you have App Extender and that's quite interesting and to show you what App Extender does I need to open the phone. So the description in the menu says App Extender displays app in dual windows for easier multitasking. When your phone is unfolded and only some apps support App Extender, X is one app that supports it. And to see what it does let's open X without this option and as you can see it's full screen and when I open a tweet, how do you call them, a thread, I don't know, um, then it also will open into full screen mode. Now let's go to the setting and enable app extender for X and as you can see this will also close the app and then when I reopen X and again click on this thread or on this post, then you get two windows. On the left is your feed and on the right is the post and all the comments. And when you click on a new post, then the post and all the comments will be opened in the second window. Especially for social media apps, um, this is quite a useful option. And uh, this is why I will also leave it enabled for X, for example. And I hope that more apps will get the option to use them with App Extender. Then you have Hover Mode and this is also quite interesting. You can see some system equipped apps already support Hover Mode and some are auto adaptive uh, like YouTube for example and I really had to look it up. So what's Hover Mode? Hover Mode is how an app behaves when you use the phone in a yeah, laptop mode, so to say, so in, in clamshell or folded mode. For example, when I open YouTube, then the controls will slide at the bottom half of the screen and the video will play on the top half of the screen and you know this from many foldables. But there are other apps that behave slightly differently and one good example, for example, is Google Maps. So normally on the inside screen, Google Maps will open in full screen mode but then when I fold the phone, then as you can see, it will change the view mode into this, into this hover mode. And then you can use the bottom half of the screen to scroll and to zoom in, for example. Um, so you have a full view on the map on the, yeah, on the top half of the screen and you can use the bottom half to control it. And every app behaves a little bit differently, so it, it depends on which app you use, what will de be displayed on the bottom half of the screen. But I think it's quite useful to be able to use this hover mode when you, for example, prop it out, up on a table and then you can quite easily use it in this configuration. So that's it. These were the 13 tips for the Honor Magic V2. Let's discuss in the comments, do you know any additional tips that I might have missed in this video? And I would be glad to welcome you in one of my next videos. Until then, take care and bye.